right, everybody, welcome. This is my first YouTube video on this channel specifically about productivity and how I manage it as a business owner with ADHD and anxiety. Um, and this really has been game changing for me. So if you guys don't know me, um, I am a holistic fitness and functional nutrition coach and I work for myself entirely. Um, I was a teacher for eight years and then um, a few years ago, I decided to go business um, into business completely for myself, um, following my other passion, which is fitness nutrition, holistic living, um, and, and just finding ways to work better with our bodies. But what ended up happening kind of in the midst of all of this was discovering <laughs> the, thankfully to, um, just, you know, psychiatrists and therapists after I had really bad anxiety in like January of 2021 was I had undiagnosed ADHD, um, which I feel like that's pretty normal right now, just within just the world. A lot of individuals, women, especially in their thirties, hi, I'm 31 are now realizing that, wow, we're just a little bit neurospicy. Um, but there's a lot of productivity tools that I had to figure out because for me, there are tasks that work for other people like time blocking, like using um, electronic reminders, task management software like Asana, where you think it's really simple um, and it's not that simple, right? Because they don't provide enough, I feel like for me, tactile involvement for me to truly connect to what it is that I'm doing. So um, my entire journey started with first brain dumping. And this is actually a strategy that I coach my clients with. I literally got just a notebook with like a memo pad and I have got just various notes and things on here. And I used this for a little while where every single day I would write down a task. So I can't show you some of this stuff because it's a little bit sensitive, but essentially what would happen is I would write down everything that I had going on for the day and any notes or things that came up. And then the next day I would like rip it off and then I do like another one the next day. Now I still have some of these notes. I just got this from Barnes and Noble, which was really nice. However, um, this still was not organized enough for me. So um, I ended up chatting with my my girlfriend Rachel who she's also um, a former teacher and she's really into bullet journaling and she has an entire page on her Instagram uh, Rachel jump art um, dedicated to bullet journaling and I was like oh my gosh I could never and she's like you know it doesn't have to be this like aesthetic artsy thing and I've tried bullet journaling in the past but it never worked for me because it was like too involved too artsy I had this like perfectionist syndrome with it so what I ended up doing was I actually got the book I picked up the book by writer Carol the bullet journal method because I really wanted to learn more about this process because as I looked it up on YouTube, I realized, huh, it doesn't have to be this perfect method. And is there a way to find a happy medium? And you can see I've tabbed this thing just to hell. It's a great also mindset book, um, but he developed this method as a way to manage his ADD. And I was like, if this worked for a writer, Carol, this could work for me. Let me just get it, try it out. So then it devolved into me then getting notebook. This is just a Moleskine notebook. It's kind of a smallish one. And this thing is a hot mess express. Um, I, it's got a little pocket in the back, which was nice. And then I added a pen loop, but I loved that it had a little, um, bookmark here as well as just a strappy so that I could make sure that I could keep it, you know, together when it was in my bag and it went everywhere with me. And this I used for the month of October and then part of November. But then as I was going, I realized that my methods needed to change. So I sort of just dove into this whole bullet, bullet journaling thing with a very open mind mind and was like, okay, I just need to give this a shot. I just need to try it out and see if it works. Nothing else is working. What do I have to lose? Literally nothing. And it ended up changing my life. So the whole point of the bullet journal method is that it's meant to be kind of simple and messy and minimal and anything that you kind of see online that's different from that. Well, that's everybody else's take on it. The bottom line is that it's going to work for the individual. So I have like my key and you can see here how I like had keys. And then I sort of had to figure out my own, um, signifiers that really work for me. Um, and then I had, uh, just, a an index. And again, here's, here's my index, which is great. Um, indexing was awesome. It helped me keep everything organized because the order of this notebook, because it was just a blank notebook to start with, right? I didn't even finish the whole thing, but I do use this for scratch paper. Now, um, this entire notebook was blank. So the whole point of the index is to be able to if things go out of order, like, Hey, I've got a content brain dip on page 32. I also have another one on page 35 to keep things organized so I can easily find them. Um, and then I had just like a, just like an overview of October, November, December, because my initial intent was to use this through the month of December, realized very quickly that was not going to work. I needed more space. Um, and then we got just, here's different things. Here's habits that I tracked. So I made it very simple, right? I literally was using pen, just a couple random stickers. I don't even know where I got this from. I kept it very simple. I had a mark. I had a pen. I had a six inch clear ruler that I still use. It's in my little pen pouch. It's just a Westcott six inch ruler. This is my little bestie. It goes everywhere with me. 
and I just used pen and then like eventually got a marker and then I got like a white gel pen. So I started in very minimal. So for example, like here's business tasks and brain dump. Here's all the things that I need to do. Here's again, here was my first attempt at setting up a week. And then this didn't work. And I realized very quickly I needed to try something different. So I figured out something called the Alistair method where I was able to um, create like a column for each day of the week and schedule out my tasks and then check them off or migrate them over. And this is how this works. Now, if you want me to go into more depth on how you can use the Alistair method, that works. And so I would do this. And now here's like a daily page. So the daily page is just kind of the genius part of the bullet journaling system where you kind of do just a daily log of everything that's going on this day. And I do daily pages more often than not in my other system that I use now, but like here's also an extension from the week before because I ran out of room. And then here's the next week. And this is when I really started to find my groove with tasks, right? What are things that I moved over? What are things that I completed? Here's my recurring tasks, things like that. Um, for next month, um, meeting action tasks for different things. And so there's all this and content needs when I had to organize all my content. So this was really awesome for me because I could literally just go and you see how messy and chaotic this is. And then I had a couple memories. Here's another content brainstorm, right? I just have all this stuff and some stuff worked and some stuff didn't. And this is just sort of a realistic, like look at a bullet journal method, right? I have notes on some of my clients in here. I use this cause I messed this up and I covered it up. And so it's a complete hot mess express. So just ignore this, but like daily log, here's things that I knew. And here's an observation that I made. This is when I realized that bullet journal clicked for me was I use work as an avoidance tactic for personal tasks. So I was really good at getting my work shit done. I was horrible at getting my personal stuff managed. Um, and so even like just things around the house. So here we go. Again, content brain dump, um, notes on a live training, true stress versus perceived stress that I did in my, um, Facebook group in the dump your diet community. Um, and then, uh, different notes I was doing for a course that I was in, right? So a meeting that I had, notes for my meeting, um, daily log, daily log. So it's literally just a running log of everything. And it was absolutely chaotic, but I loved it. But I knew that I needed something with just a little bit more structure. And I realized that I had some things missing. And this is when I discovered our journal of notebooks, which are absolutely gorgeous. So this was my very first, like all, all of an Archer, like bullet journal. And this thing is gorgeous. I ended up adding an extra pen loop here for the way that I used it. And this was my first attempt at making something aesthetic, but it's basically just a dot grid journal, right? Just like this one, but bigger with more pages. And I was like, I'll be able to fit an entire two or three months in here. I was wrong. The way that I was setting it up, I was trying to put too many things in the mix, but it ended up working. So like I have a future log. I don't really use a future log. I don't need shit like this. It's pretty, but it's not necessary. And I need function habits, right? I tracked my workouts for the month. This was really awesome. I tracked all my habits for the month. I was able to assess. This was really beneficial for me. Okay. Um, health stats. I ended up not doing this again. I was taking inspiration meal planner. I gave myself room for meal planning. I didn't use it all. Um, I tracked my bills, my spending, um, meeting notes for different meetings, things like that. And this worked really well. Now here's sort of like biz tasks and brain dump for my business things. And then again, personal and business. Again, we see this Alistair method and this is, and then I did dailies. So these are my dailies, which was awesome. Here's, um, more dailies. Here's more dailies. And then a weekly reflection. And then I was doodling and there, I was loving this, but I still wasn't loving it. Um, and so again, I was finding a groove, but it wasn't quite still what I needed. Part of it was that I was just so overwhelmed by like the blank pages. And this is when I started doing daily journaling. So I was doing like micro journaling on a daily basis, which was nice to be able to set this up. Uh, love this page, business tasks and personal tasks, things like this. Okay. Look at this just weekly journal. This is for a week bullet journal. The beauty of it is you can do whatever it is. And here's December. And I actually ended up not even using this in December because I switched to another system. I realized very quickly that while I love the idea of setting up my own notebook, I love the concept of bullet journaling, but I needed just a little bit more structure. And so because I dove into planner YouTube and now I use this as like more of a brain dump now. So like this is a brain dump notebook for when I need to write something out at my desk, but I don't, doesn't really need to go. So I was mind mapping my different goals and things like this for 2022. And actually I'm already almost through with this notebook because I use it for just like sort of scribbling and taking notes and brain dumping and testing out different things. And I only have like this much left in it. Um, and so this is just my November. So we had October, November. And this is where we come into play. So now this is the evolution. Brain dump memo pad, bullet journal attempt number one, bullet journal attempt number two. This is the realistic progression, you guys. Now we come into 
the Hobonichi style, the Weeks. I love this because one, it's compact. It's a little bit smaller, which is really, really nice. I just bought this randomly to test it out and I thought I was gonna set it up and that's why it has tabs on it. I actually ended up hating the tabs. I mean, I love the tabs are high quality, but I don't need the tabs because I use these little Midori index clips, which I will show you what those look like on my current planner, but it just makes it easier. I've clipped the day that I'm on anyway. So I ended up setting this one up for the month of December and ended up using it for the month of December. Now, this is not how I'm currently using my Hobonichi Weeks anymore, but I was able to track my habits, track my events, cross out the days. Um, and if I turn to the month of the weeks of December, I have, and this again is a hot mess express because I was trying to learn. I tipped in a page here for my food log, um, all my tasks for the week, right? events, workouts, tasks for the week. And it kind of went on like this, but this was still too messy and chaotic. And I really used the month of December to figure out what does my week need to look like. Now, the nice thing about the Hobonichi weeks is that it's got a note space in the back. So um, this one, the regular weeks only has like 75 pages. And I realized very quickly that that was not going to be enough. So like I wanted space to be able to put my trackers in the month because they wouldn't all fit. And then I was like, what else am I going to put back here? Do I need to get another notebook? I ended up stuffing a couple other notebooks into the back of my planner cover. And that just didn't work for me in the long term. It didn't, it didn't work. So I ended up getting a Hobonichi Weeks mega and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so once I figured out what was gonna work for me that had enough space for me to keep organized, but gave me enough space to brain dump, write notes, and scribble things down, we come in the Hobonichi Weeks Mega. This baby has 220 pages in the back, and let me take my Tombow marker out of there. This baby has a whole lot of pages in the back that are blank that gives me tons of room. Now, I don't need like a page per day. I just need enough room to scribble things out. So I decorated mine. I definitely had a lot of fun exploring on Planner YouTube, found some sticker companies that I really like because I want my planner to be pretty so I come back to it. But I bullet journal in this planner, essentially. So um, this is my dashboard. I have little self-care reminders that I printed and put in my word of the year. And then um, here's like my tracker for some of my health, specifically cycle health. And then here's the month of December. So what I ended up doing for the month of December, because I really don't need a monthly view, is I ended up writing in all my workouts just so I can see an overview of what it actually looks like. Um, I back planned from my other Hobonichi into this one. And then like, here's the month of January. So here's all the workouts that I've done. First week of January, I got a tooth pulled and then I was actually sick this week, like the first couple, like Tuesday and Wednesday. So I feel like it's taken me like a full week or two to get really into the swing of things with this Hobonichi, but this is what it looks like. Pretty minimal, but it's still pretty. And here are those Midori index clips that I really like that I got on jet pens just to mark the pages. And so then here is what like a week looks like. Like, okay, so here's all my personal to-do list. Here's all my events for the for the days. And then here's me checking off how much water am I drinking? Did I take my vitamins? So personal care. And then here's like a list of my business tasks for the week. So my recurring business tasks and then my to-do list. Now the problem I was running into is this is again this Alistair method that we saw in my other bullet journal. I was running into the fact that I would fill up an entire task list every single week and I would run out of room because what I do with my clients is I work very closely with them. So there are always things that come up as the week goes on. Oh, I need to adjust this person's programming. I need to get, find these resources and cultivate them for this person. Let me put this together. And it wasn't on my list at the beginning of the week, but it's a lot of like small things that I have to get done throughout the week that need to go on my list. So I'm trying something new next week where I'm actually going to track my recurring tasks, my home tasks, my personal care. So things that I need to complete kind of throughout the week. And then I'm using in the back, I'm gonna do just like a weekly list. So I haven't started it yet, so I'm gonna put my weekly lists in the back. I just put some tape for decoration. But like, for example, here's yesterday and today. So this is all stuff from yesterday. Like I had to send a couple, I had to update a couple contracts. I had to send a shoulder mobility. I need to send a birth control. Um, I needed to identify some other paperwork things. I needed to follow up with one of my clients on this. I needed to schedule certain things for other things. Brain dump, okay? Then it's just some more and then other shit, right? Like here's today. Here are things for today. So I can just keep sort of a running list of tasks as the week goes on versus like it all fitting into one of these pages. And because there are so many blank pages back here, I think it's gonna work out. Now, I do have another planner from Sweet Freckle Designs that's a blank planner that's a similar setup, but this one came in the mail first and I just wanted to get moved in to see if it's gonna work. If for some reason I do run out of pages, I will likely just completely move into that blank planner because it's undated. So once I run out of pages back here, I'm just gonna move into my Sweet Freckle Designs, which is 
amazing because again, it's undated, but it's the same size as a Hobonishi Weeps. So it's just a little bit thicker and it's in its little packaging right now because I opened it to look at it and then I put it away. I was like, baby, you're gonna go to sleep until I'm ready to come, come work with you. But for example, it's got kind of this leatherette cover. It's a similar setup, right? We have all the months at the beginning, oh, all the months at the beginning, and then we have the week. So here's a week and here's this empty page. And this also has more space because it doesn't have like the Hobonichi weeks has like quotes and stuff down here. This uses the space. And then at the back, it's got enough pages for one page per day in the notes pages, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So whenever I end up running out of room in my notes pages in my current Hobonichi, I'm just gonna migrate on over to this whenever that ends up happening, whatever month that ends up happening, even if I don't finish this notebook. But the nice thing is, is it will also fit into this planner cover. So now what I use for this, because this is um, a specific kind of paper, a Tomoe River paper, I actually use a fountain pen with ink, which I absolutely love. It's a retractable fountain pen. It's not the Pilot Vanishing Point, it's a different one. And I use like a Tombow marker because the Tombow marker will highlight over this specific ink that I have, which is the D Atramentis Archive ink. Um, it's, it's really, really good black ink. And it just writes so beautifully on this paper. Now, the reason why this works for my ADHD and why I've sort of progressed to this point is because I need to tactilely connect to my to-do list and my productivity. And if I don't write something down, it is not going to happen. The reason why electronic reminders don't work is because there's not enough of a connection to an alarm going off on my phone or a reminder going off on my phone. So there's no way that I'm going to get it done. So that's just a brief overview of my productivity system. I am going to start sharing it here on this channel. I will also be cross posting some content from my page. So this YouTube channel is going to end up being um, a little bit of planner stuff, a little bit of productivity, um, a little bit of health, a little bit of nutrition, a little bit of mindset, um, just overall, because I really truly believe that our productivity links back to how we care for our physical bodies. Um, and that's so important. Like you guys see in here, right? Even in next week, I literally have to put personal care down as things that I do because I, I do need to remember to wash my hair. I will forget to wash my hair. I will forget to um, wipe my teeth. I like to do baths to soak my muscles because some of my days are really hard training and I need to recover. I will forget to do the laundry. It will sit in a basket in clean clothes for home tasks because for me, task switching and doing multiple things in one day can be really difficult for my ADHD. So anyway, that is my setup. If you have any questions about this setup, um, let me know. I will definitely, I would love to reply to the comments and just have conversations with you guys. But other than that, that is my setup. I'll definitely maybe do even some plan with me's of like how I set up certain weeks. Now I do use a Hobonichi cousin that does fit into my planning, but I won't go over that today. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you did find this video helpful or interesting in any way, shape or form, please um, hit that like button. That will really help push this little baby channel out to people in the audience that would like to see it or who need to see it or need to, you know, I love watching other people's planner videos because I like to see what works for other people because it inspires me to really hone in on my own experience. And um, yeah, all right, thanks so much guys. You had to like choose one thing so far. What would be the biggest win so far for you? There's so many wins. <laughs> I would have to say, I mean, for more of the mental, emotional piece, not having stress about food, just being able to eat things without worrying about it mm -hmm. has been huge. I love that I can just go, I can eat, I know what I can have because I can eat anything, but I know how to help myself make it more nutritious. I know how to balance my meals. I know that nothing is going to ruin every progress I have so it doesn't domino effect into I had one bad meal I'm gonna eat all of them now I'm really good at that and then my biggest physical or gain and win would probably be that now I have a butt never had a butt before so <laughs> I'm gonna have to say that's probably the best physical gain that I have made